Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Good old FTP, the file transfer protocol, is, in my opinion, luckily on its way out. And, well, browsers stopped supporting it. With that, of course, there are not a lot of legitimate uses typically left for a user to use FTP. So Xavier came across a Python script that actually uses FTP to download Redline Stealer. It does inject Redline Stealer into its own process, which is sort of interesting, but uh, just a good lesson here that you probably should watch out for FTP connections. They are often these days malicious. If they're not malicious, you probably should find a way to switch to a different protocol. SCP sort of comes to mind, maybe HTTPS, in order to avoid the problems that come with the clear text FTP protocol. And German IT website Heise has an interesting article about how uh, Google's uh, camera implemented in Android does misread QR codes. Now, this is interesting uh, because, well, QR codes were specifically designed to be read automatically and have some error correction built in uh, to actually be readable, even if uh, the QR code isn't displayed very well. But I guess that wasn't good enough for Google, so Google sent a it's machine learning algorithms uh, after uh, the URLs that are being extracted and apparently certain URLs are misread as a result. In particular, uh, Google uh, does appear to insert random dots. Uh, for example, if the top level domain is a country level domain, but uh, the domain name includes like a the string com or uh, co, it may add a dot com dot and then the respective country level domain because I guess it feels like this is a more likely correct URL, which of course is wrong in this case. So the end result is if you're scanning a QR code, you will end up at the wrong URL, not the one that uh, whoever printed the QR code intended you to visit, which could in some cases lead to malicious URLs, but typically just uh, breaks a particular applications. But an hacker could, for example, register one of those domains that are often uh, returned instead of the correct uh, domain. And with that sort of siphon uh, specific uh, requests uh, to, for example, newyorkcity.gov is one of the domains that apparently is affected by uh, these uh, misread URLs. I'll add uh, two links in the show notes uh, for this story. One is the original German article at Heise. The second link is uh, one of the better sort of English uh, language articles I've found that's based on the original for those of you not speaking German. And for the Linux users out there, there is an important update to the Linux kernel fixing a privilege escalation vulnerability. Uh, this issue is in particular uh, important for containers. Uh, patches have been released for some Ubuntu versions for Red Hat. Uh, they should be coming out, uh, if not uh, today, maybe uh, tomorrow. In the last couple of days, there was a lot of talk about the uh, compromise of crypto.com and apparently about uh, $35 million in various cryptocurrencies was lost as a part of uh, this uh, compromise. Now, I usually don't talk much about breaches unless there's sort of a lesson uh, to be learned. And here it is that, well, a two-factor authentication needs to be implemented correctly. Apparently, attackers were able to bypass a two-factor authentication in this case. Crypto.com did not yet, as far as I can tell, elaborate how this bypass exactly happened, but they state that they redid uh, their two-factor authentication infrastructure and essentially users now have to recreate their second uh, factor. Remember, we just had another uh, sort of two-factor authentication bug with Box.com. Now, Box.com file sharing is still an important site, but of course, not quite as important as a cryptocurrency or essentially a banking uh, website. 
Microsoft published an interesting list of the top 25 group policies that administrators should not use in Windows 10 and 11. Uh, the main reason here is that uh, some of these policies are either no longer implemented or are not working anymore as expected. So the list goes through these policies, uh, which ones work, don't work, how they work, and also what to use instead if you still want that particular behavior as long as something else is available. Pretty interesting article and uh, certainly a nice sort of dive into some of these uh, crew policies. So something uh, good to review for Windows administrators. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And if you have a minute, well, uh, please leave a review in your favorite uh, podcast platform so others will be able to find this podcast uh, We do also have this podcast on YouTube. People keep asking for it. Of course, it's audio only. There is no uh, video with this. But if you like the format, if you like to uh, play this on YouTube, yes, uh, the podcast is available. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.